JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 20th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers. <coughs> What's my opinion moving ahead? What are today's important events and how they could affect the markets? But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment uh, recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all the other major currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session uh, Friday, losing the most ground against uh, CHF, JPY and the Euro in that order, and losing the least versus the Canadian dollar. Now the strengthening of the Swiss franc and the yen and the Japanese yen suggests, uh, suggests a risk of trading activity, but the weakening of the US dollar points otherwise. Perhaps there was an extension of Wednesday's risk aversion into Thursday, but things changed at some point during the day or today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major European and US indices uh, continue to slide, uh, but appetite improved during the Asian session today, with all Asian indices under our radar trading in the green. Now, it seems that European and US shares continue to feel the heat of concerns over the effects of high inflation uh, on the global economy after Target Corp announced that uh, quarterly profits halved and that a bigger margin hit later this year is very likely due to rising fuel and freight costs. Now, what may have prompted investors to extend their selling uh, during the US session may have been Cisco Systems uh, dismal outlook uh, with the individual stock slumping around 13.7%. So if, the, if, the, if this is the case, if we still have concerns over uh, searching inflation, why, why did market morale improve during the Asian session today? Perhaps due to China's, to, due to China's decision to cut its five-year loan prime rate by 15 basis points uh, this morning a deeper than expected cut and then and, and decision taken to cushion uh, the economic uh, the economic slowdown. However, the one year uh, LPR was left unchanged at a time when uh, most uh, respondents uh, to a Reuters poll uh, have been anticipating five basis points cuts in both rates. Now, so having said all that, we stick to our guns that the path of least resistance for equities is to the downside and for the dollar is still to the upside. So despite uh, China's uh, supportive uh, move, uh, we still believe that there is room to the downside. The fundamental landscape has not changed much. Uh, after all, uh, overnight China also announced three new coronavirus cases outside of uh, quarantined areas, which could weigh on hopes that strict restrictions and lockdowns could be eased uh, soon. So this scales back uh, those hopes over uh, some ease of restrictions in China. On top of that, concerns over high inflation keep elevated expectations and bets over fast tightening by some major central banks. Which, uh, expect, which is negative for equities. Higher interest rates mean uh, um, higher uh, borrowing costs so for companies and also lower present values for uh, high, growth fer high growth firms, which are valued based on uh, discounted uh, expected future cash, cash flows. Uh, so High inflation keeps uh, elevated expectations uh, and bets over fast tightening by some major central banks, but also 
it intensifies fears over a global recession. And as if stagflation is not an important reason on its own for investors to be nervous, the war in Ukraine is still raging, which could make things uh, worse. Even if it doesn't escalate uh, to beyond a two nations uh, military conflict, its prolonged duration could hurt even more global supply chains and thereby uh, the global economy as a whole. Uh, another point is that, again, we are on a Friday, even if we see some further recovery during, during the European and US uh, sessions, we will treat that as uh, portfolio rebalancing uh, during the end of the week and we will treat the recovery as a corrective move. We said that last Friday, it appeared to be, uh, to, uh, it appeared that uh, this was a case. We believe that this may be the case this time as well. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events uh, of the week much, early, much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar. <coughs> which I'm halting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.